Hey guys, Luke here. Uh, so if you're just for the, the guide in the walkthrough, uh, click here, somewhere in this area, and that'll take you straight to uh, installing uh, VS Code, uh, installing Project I.O., and then going through and configuring the board to use the um, Marlin 2.0 on your ST X5 GT. Otherwise, uh, stay tuned and I'll kind of talk through my, my journey from uh, my original uh, you know, choice to go to this particular board here. Um, and then uh, to, to switch from Smoothie over to Marlin 2.0. So the, the Panicat uh, GTX5 um, is a pretty premium board that was built um, to use Smoothieware. It's a 32-bit board, so it was um, really good for uh, Delta drivers and then some of the higher micro-stepping um, units that can get all the way up to 256. Um, for my previous custom-built printers, I've used Aztec X3 and X3 Pro boards. Um, I, I really like the Pro um, because it, it was able to go up to maybe if I wanted to use the Kraken, um, the four separate extruders, and then use the the four separate hot ends, and, and you know just go completely crazy um, with that. Um, on top of uh, advertising that they had pretty robust component design, um, I'm pretty clumsy with electronics sometimes, uh, especially with a, a larger solder head, and that's actually you know the, the reason that I have this board in my hand instead of being a printer is because I uh, I kind of broke it. Um, I also originally bought them because of the Vicky, Vicky 2.0 um, LCD, which is a bit more advanced and, and I understood that one better in terms of documentation since Panocat kind of offered something straight out of the box for it. Um, so I ran Marlin firmware on, on that, uh, not only because it was what was you know kind of pre-configured for it um, on their website, but also because for a kit printer that I had assembled, um, they used Marlin on there, so I got a bit of comfort. Uh, one of the, my the most annoying parts about Marlin was that I had to, um, you know, to, in order to add, you know, pins or, or a new fan or a controller, you have to go in, edit that, turn that on um, in the firmware, compile it, reflash it, um, in, in order to get anything to work. But uh, Smoothieware, um, which is what you know, a, a buddy of mine showed me when when he got his first 32-bit board, um, was that all you had to do was add in the switch module, just copy paste it, and uh, you could do that by just opening up a text file that looked like an SD card when you plug in your computer to it. Um, so that you know that kind of got me really interested in the whole smoothie board. Is this really the the way to go? What should I do? Um, I just I just really like that because I, I was kind of annoyed at having to go through a long config finding that exact setting or going into the pins and, and finding the board pin and then changing all that. Um, it, it was just a lot simpler since Smoothie was pretty much board agnostic. You just kind of threw it on and it knew what to do. Um, as, as long as you knew what pins uh, you were doing, of course. Um, so I, you know, when it was time to build my uh, Mongo, my Reliable XL, um, I, I figured that I'd give 32-bit uh, board a shot. And so I, I did. So when it came to picking uh, this particular 32-bit board instead of something like um, the MKS S Base, um, which is a 32-bit board, which I, I don't recommend for anybody here, um, they took Smoothie's code and and then uh, uh, they hid it behind a wall there. So the Smoothie uh, people aren't very uh, very friendly with them because they took the what Smoothie did and made it closed source on their end, and they're not uh, give back according to the GPL uh, version three license. But um, another thing that drove me was uh, these TMC uh, 2660 drivers um, in the form of the, this is the uh, BSD 2660, which is Panicat's um, own form factor. So uh, what basically what it is, is they just uh, make it a bit larger and they give it this nice big heatsink, um, which allows it to uh, uh, drive more current. Um, and do it reliably. Uh, the, the reason I, I really wanted a, a TMC uh, based board was that uh, because of these uh, TMC um, 2130s, uh, which is something that I really like with their silent stick, silent step um, tech that they got on here that makes them really quiet and fairly, uh, um, fairly powerful still for um, how, how quiet they are. So I, I really appreciate that as well. Um, I've been uh, using, um, you know, I've, I've gone all the way down from the A4899s um, to the uh, DRV8825s uh, um, and then uh, to the TMC2130s 
and uh, I, I wanted to, to stay along with this, but instead of having a, a hardware enable, um, such as the uh, the wire that soldered across the, the two pins there, I wanted something that could be software configurable, so I don't have to deal with voltage control. Or anything. These boards can use things like stall guard, digital current control, software controlled micro stepping, so you can just into a parameter like we'll see later and then it'll choose that micro stepping and then uh, cool step as well so you it it smartly will change the current based on what you're doing there um, I haven't enabled any of those features yet but I, I really look forward to doing it but um, right now my machine works pretty well so I, I try not to puss with things too much there um, so this uh, using these uh, chips here in replaceable format seemed like a really nice upgrade uh, because if I would want to make even bigger machine or more powerful motors or you know something crazy um, it's, it's a lot of room to grow and that's that's what I try to go for I always try to buy the machine that I can grow into not the machine that I've already mastered um, which is going to be the, the way that we're going to go um, so eventually I made my purchase um, I got uh, the this and it was pretty easy to set up um, all you need is just the drop the config file on there in a text format and change all the parameters that you need to so the the stuff that came from Panda Cat's website was you know the set up the exactly the right way and um, all I need to do is just give it uh, my you know machine specific stuff like acceleration values that I used back from Marlin um, the, the size of the bed, what pins I had which fans connected to, and I was I was rolling from there. But uh, the weird thing is, I wasn't getting the best quality out of the out of the printer. Like the, even though it had the same mechanics and I was running uh, less aggressive um, settings for uh, acceleration and velocity after a while, so I, I tuned everything down. I still wasn't getting as sharp a print as I was used to with my smaller rigid bot. Um, so. It was, it was really, really weird, but I kept going with it, thinking of something that I had done, or I just didn't understand something. Um, so after a while, I inadvertently broke uh, the board that was my Rigibot was running on, and uh, so I decided to upgrade that one too to the nice 32-bit smoothie board and, and get going. Um, it, and it seemed like a, a, a great idea, and then I also got the Ethernet adapter as well um, to start hooking them up to um, my network so I can control prints over the network. Because it was kind of my dream to just get the uh, printers out of the room that I'm in now, actually, and move them downstairs where it can be a lot quieter, and I don't have to worry about my kids um, running in and, and touching anything. So um, I, I put those on, and uh, but after like a month or two, I started having these really weird issues with the um, the printers freezing up. They wouldn't respond to commands. They wouldn't. Um, they wouldn't print off the SD card, they'd be printing and all of a sudden they just stop and the heaters would fail on. That's the you know the, the most important part, but when you reset it, it would go back to behaving normally and it wouldn't have any issue. So I tried to do my due diligence. I flashed new firmware, I flashed older builds of the same firmware, I rebuilt my config from the ground up, I made sure that my thermal runaway was on and my all basically all the safety settings that I could turn on I made sure that they were turned on and configured appropriately to, to see but uh, nothing nothing would help it would just stop and the MOSFETs would stay on and I would have a very 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 toasty hot end until one day um, I had to go for a little while for something that wasn't expected I was gone a little longer and it froze when I didn't expect it and so the, the picture on your screen is, is basically what um, what unfortunately happened I had a meltdown and that ruined the bed and it ruined the uh, the E3D hot end that was currently in it. So uh, that was kind of unfortunate and um, there I just decided to go on the forums. I asked the supplier and uh, neither could really answer my question un unfortunately. Um, I, I tried everything and I, I couldn't get it to work. Um, which is why I started looking into um, a couple of the things. I started removing hardware to see if that was a problem and I eventually found that it was in fact these uh, Ethernet modules that allowed the um, this is something that's provided by PandaCat themselves. So this is something that they developed for the specific board. It's not like a, a you know third-party additive. It's it's something there. So um, I took that off, and the board behaved normally again. So thankfully, it wasn't like a hardware failure. It was just something with the way that this module interacted with the firmware um, that that caused an issue for my failing. And so I, I went back, and, and they started working again. But it still wasn't getting as clean as. Um, as I was used to. So, <laughs> once again, uh, common theme here. Um, I, I broke a board, um, which is actually why this board is sitting in my hand and not at a printer. Um, I broke a board and I needed a, uh, 
ape it because I didn't want to pay another hundred and some bucks to, to use one of these boards again. Um, and I went for an ape it and I was planning on selling it. Well, uh, once I got that 8-bit board running, it started looking beautiful again with the same settings. Like, what what the heck? Because I was, you know, I was planning on getting a i3 Prusa because that's the kind of quality I wanted. And I, I wasn't getting it, or I was getting it now with that 8-bit board. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? And uh, I found one um, one thing online that said there was something weird about the motion planner and smoothly compared to Marlin, and that the, the Marlin one was just better. That makes sense to me in in you know just just taking at it at first glance because uh, Marlin has been used on on you know thousands and thousands of millions of printers, um, whereas Smoothie probably has quite a lot less. Um, and Marlin team is, is pretty big versus um, Arnold Wolf um, making the the Smoothie firmware with a couple other uh, contributors as well. But so I decided to switch back to Marlin and, and see if they were able to support the 32-bit ports. So, you know, I, I took a look online and I, I took a look at Marlin 2.0 and it, it turns out that they're supporting boards like this one in a 32-bit format with uh, LPC um, 1769 processor, um, which is what this board and the smoothie board proper uses um, as well. And that they, uh, Team Loud also had written a uh, um, also had written a library to support uh, TMC 2660 drivers, some other advanced uh, drivers for uh, nice digital uh, current control and then enabling all those fancy software features that I talked about beforehand. Um, so after reading through documentation and you know going for trial and error and, and working with a couple uh, a couple coder friends of mine just to make sure that I wasn't doing something wrong when, when I set it up or had to edit a, a thing or two there. Um, I finally have it running fairly stably with uh, bed leveling and, and some software features turned on and, and firmware control um, running and I kind of wanted to, to share that back and set up a video guide for anyone who might have you know bought one of these boards and hadn't configured Marlin before or hadn't configured Marlin 2.0 in, in the new environment. So I'll be walking through uh, downloading um, VS code. I'll be, uh, I'll be going through the Project I.O. plugin, um, going through the um, uh, configuring Marlin itself to, to get this uh, board to work with this driver and, and vice versa and get to work with whatever components you like. Um, and then I'll, I'll walk through flashing it, which is honestly pretty simple. It's, it's drag and drop. Um, so that's actually the easiest part of this. Um, so, you know, I just figure about going through it all for, for anyone who can look for it. Because when I, when I went looking originally on this uh, journey, um, I, I, didn't, I didn't see anything. So I, I wanted to, to, to give back to the people um, and the documentation that's gone through. So uh, sit back, enjoy, and, and I've uh, included um, all those links before. I'll include them again here in this area. Um, for any of the specific um, areas that you're looking for, just so you can page around. And, and thanks for watching. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe. I'll probably have more of this stuff up. Um, I'm gonna have, like I said before, I'm gonna have um, that video comparing uh, a, a print on smoothie with the exact same acceleration, exact same jerk, as well as a, a print of, of Marlin. The you know same same G code, different firmware, it's just to get a, a comparison to see if I can uh, quantify and qualify. Uh, the differences for uh, the general public there, since that's not something I've been able to find much uh, information on. So I'll, I'll, I'll be going through that run through uh, in the future, um, as well as any other builds and, and you know problems that I run across in the future. So you know, subscribe is really um, help me know that people care and, and they listen. And I appreciate your time watching. Because